Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce our speaker uh, today, uh, Matteo Tapella uh, from uh, University of Tokyo. No, I think, sorry, I'm just talking to Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Matteo is a professor from IDIU in the University of Tokyo. He has been uh, famous for his work on both theory and uh, observational side of uh, weak practice analyzing uh, observations. Um, and and, and uh, he also played a very important role in the collaboration between uh, Princeton and uh, the Japanese uh, astronomy community. So, uh, yeah, welcome, Masahiro. And, and, and he will talk about the HSC year three data. Okay, so thank you so much. Nice introduction. Oh, I'm I'm getting nervous. <laughs> I'm I'm older than you know than uh, what uh, how I look like actually. So, but please let let me let me try to do my best. So it's really great to to, to be here. And uh, thanks so much for our uh, invitation. I'm Masiro Takada, visiting from uh, Kabuki IPMU, and uh, that's at, at the University of Tokyo. And today I will talk about you know our new result from you know Subaru Hypersimulation Survey dataset. And the Princeton is most the most important partner. For this project, and I will tell you about it. And you, 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 you know, you are very expert for astrophysics, and I will touch on like a baryonic physics effect on the disposable result. And also, we are um, I mostly focus on I call sigma tension or SA tension, and that might be new signature for new physics beyond lambda the model. So please ask me, and <laughs> please give me all feedback. And our team uh, is really trying to get robust constraint, and uh, we try to be very conservative. I'm personally, I'm very convinced, but still, you know, I, I, we need, really need to figure out how, if or not this is really true. So to begin, you know, uh, before you know, starting my talk, I'd like to express my really great uh, respect to Nick Kaiser, our friend, and he, unfortunately, he passed away uh, last year, uh, not this year, sorry. And he's a really, really great scientist and a great friend, and he's always stimulating, encouraging. And he's also a hidden member of Kabi IPMU, and uh, uh, you know he's like a pioneer of gravitational lensing. Unless he's developed the theory of gravitational lensing, probably I, I'm not here. So he's he's a great guy. So uh, this is our telescope, and uh, Japan only has one telescope. Okay, so not four, like a BLT. And this is, you know, our, our earlier generation, a previous generation, astronomer in Japan decided to build telescope in, in Hawaii, not in Japan, because Japan is humid and the weather is not good. They decided to build a telescope in Hawaii. Really, that's really first time national kind of uh, alert in, uh, kind of facility and observatory outside Japan, uh, but, but they make a really big decision for us. And this is a uh, uh, Mauna Kea, and uh, 4,200 meter height. And then this is the telescope. And the unique thing for the telescope has, uh, uh, we have a prime focus instrument in here. Usually here, uh, secondary mirror, then, then light is coming from here. The primary mirror reflected, secondary mirror again reflected, then detector, heavy detector, usually in category and focus point. However, Subaru is really strong, stiff, so then, then we can hold really big camera at prime focus unit. So that's why this is a really unique telescope. Again, this is a big decision by previous like astronomer in Japan. So uh, this began uh, in a study in 2008. And a big milestone for us for this project is that uh, at Princeton University and the Academy of Shinika Institute of Astronomy and Astrophysics in Taiwan, AJA, uh, joined this project to contribute to our fundraising. So this, this project was realized. I was luckily involved in this project from the beginning, and the uh, and, uh, camera was built. The camera three meter high, <laughs> three ton weight, and uh, field of view is big because this is a prime focus camera, and uh, about one gear pixel camera. So it's, uh, it's really, really working well. So this precursor instrument before uh, of uh, LSST camera. So that's why Princeton colleague decided to join. HHS, they are really smart. You know? <laughs> so this is a test bed for LSST. So HHC like this, compared to full moon size. Okay, so you can easily imagine having this camera, you can easily map sky. So previous, previous our camera is, it will be look like this, but uh, this HSC, hyper cam, 
has a, such a wide field of view kind of area you can see at one time. So that's why you, you can make a survey. So this is a really great instrument for survey astronomy. And uh, for this prime question, it then then uh, uh, HSC not um, is actually it's not always on the telescope. And every month we have to install and remove. <laughs> if the moon is up on the sky, our uh, sky is so bright. Uh, usually we put the secondary mirror here. So every month we install. Then two weeks observation is HSC. Then after two weeks we remove it. Okay, that's that's how how to operate this very, uh, telescope because this is a community telescope and other purpose, you know, kind of uh, explanatory science and so on, you know, they are using different instruments by uh, using secondary mirror. So, uh, you know, I'm astronomer, more or less, and uh, this is really amazing job. We are using photon from sky, taking picture, uh, taking data with camera, then do science. And if you go to, you know, summit of Mauna Kea, it's really, really amazing. It's really, really beautiful sky, and we are doing science with such amazing data set. So uh, this is, again, comparison between HSC and Subaru, no, no, Sloan, and Sloan, again, is, uh, Princeton, the central press was, you know, leading this kind this sky survey project because Jim is here, and, uh, and uh, this, this region is the same region. And this is uh, Song Fang, is uh, your former colleague at the Princeton, uh, made uh, this image. In the center, you have a big uh, elliptic galaxy in here. And the upper uh, kind of row uh, are the same, same, same galaxy, but with HSC. You can see same galaxy now is more well resolved. In addition to that, you can see many uh, red objects around it, which means that this sun behind uh, this sun galaxy, behind this uh, big galaxy. Also, sm all small galaxy also can be observed. So in a, a, every region, we are talking about this kind of data set. It's uh, many galaxies, small galaxies, distant galaxies, and all galaxies will resolve. And we, we can do many science by using this data set. So, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a cosmologist. If we can do all sky survey with the HSC, I'm more than happy. But of course, time is limited, and so many competition between different sciences. And uh, I and Michael led uh, a team to decide how, what kind of survey design would be most optimal for doing science. So we decided to do like a, a wedding cake type three layers uh, observations. One is uh, uh, very white, this wine red color region, about 1100 square degrees, and the data already taken. All data set taken uh, in, in all uh, five global band filters, GRI, ZY. Other region, we also have a deeper uh, survey region, like we call deep or little deep, by also having a narrow band filters. So then this data would be also very useful for studying galaxy evolution and the process. So uh, we have a deep, ultra deep, and wide field survey layers. And for today's talk, mostly on a wide field layer, this region around the equator. And our depth is in a, in a point source, it's like a 26 magnitude for, for IBAN. So it's really, really deep. So all the data is taken, and we already made like a, a, a three times public data release, the DR3. And uh, if you, you want to work on it, of course, here you have access in the Princeton University Town Hall. And uh, you, you can you use uh, all data set, but uh, if you are uh, even are not HC member, you can use this uh, public, public data for your science. You can do all science, like moving objects, white dwarf, and uh, the galaxies, and the cosmos, and so on. So it's, it's really amazing. So we are building this, this website and also making public data release. So uh, today's talk about uh, cosmology and uh, this is our team uh, this amazing team and uh, uh, i'd like I, I should stress that at this time all junior scientists uh, led this project and uh, uh, Luhi Darar, i'm not sure uh, she's here but uh, Luhi is one of the uh, kind of junior scientists who has made a really really significant contribution and uh, all young scientists is visible and we are I would say very happy collaboration, you know, I hope. And uh, we have more lots of discussion, very smooth collaboration, no fight, <laughs> and, uh, and many good science. And uh, after one or two years uh, effort, we, we made, a, a, made it to public, have, having lots of publication. Once again, we had a, a HHS year three results, and we announced it, we, we published many papers around 
uh, you know, kind of uh, a spring, April, and this is a series of papers. Yes. And the Kosonui paper was uh, selected like edited as suggestion for PLD, and you'll see uh, soon uh, that uh, that kind of series of paper. So uh, this is a history of universe. Again, uh, this is from taken from W map picture. Uh, David, uh, kind of David is reading this W map and uh, uh, inflation and the by using solar telescope, you can see sky or universe from today in back in time like this. And CMB uh, are having really, really precise measurement of snapshot in uh, this R universe. But our telescope can see uh, our present day universe, late time universe. So this would be complementary. So uh, Lambda CD model currently is a standard model of universe. And, uh, and only five or six ish parameters can explain this whole data set for Planck CMB data set. Like uh, you have like 2000 data points, but this you know, uh, this model can fit everything. It's amazing. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I have been working on cosmology for more than 30 years. This model is too simple, okay? Too simple to be true. <laughs> all, all of us are made of five parameters, okay? Uh, in planet and the galaxy and so on, starting from this quantum fluctuations and then if you if you determine these num select these numbers among dark matter, among the dark energy, among the dark baryon, also you have to assume like inflation. Then this model is supposed to predict everything. Sounds sounds crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, sounds too simple. So uh, I think really uh, galaxy survey have to test, make a really, really strange test if or not this standard model, such a simplest model, is true. That's a, that's a really big question, you know, at least for me, for the team to, to, to try to, to uh, trying to address. So as I told you, uh, this is a CMB, and then if you specify five numbers, you can evolve your universe up to present. And uh, this is a snapshot in the simulation to, to simulate structure formation from beginning to today. Of course, the expansion is uh, subtracted, this common coordinate units. So due to dark matter gravity, uh, you know, plant kind of inhomogeneity grow by gravitational instability, then, then to make uh, this parameter is a cosmic wave to up towards our present. Uh, so as I told you, Subaru can see uh, from today to back in time, this structure. Then, then CMB has a precise measurement of initial condition of present day uh, structure formation. So if you assume five numbers, you can evolve your universe up to today. Then my talk mostly you know, focused on this sigma eight or S eight today. And so the so so data set can directly measure uh, these parameters. This is like a lumpiness of the time universe. But however, a CMB, if you assume five number, you can evolve then to extract what sigma eight SA value would be for lambda shield model, if lambda shield model two. That's an uh, inferred number from CMB. So uh, sigma eight tension or SA tension is uh, indeed like a, a, a sigma eight directly measured by galaxy survey. This one, we can measure lumpiness, clumpiness, uh, present day universe compared to CMB infrared, sigma eight value. Infrared means that, uh, once again, if you measure five numbers, you can, you can evolve your, your universe to today to predict this number. And the Planck CMB data uh, uh, predicts this number would be 0 0.83, 0 0.8-ish. So you could ask if or not this number would be consistent with each other, then lambda CD model can work out for everything, okay? That's a question. So however, this, this, this plot is very small. I, this plot is not meant by, uh, you know, you can see everything. So this, this X axis is a SA number, and then Y axis are different experiment. Upper three data is from CME data. Lower ones, all rosy universe data, uh, were sigma uh, SA value, measure value including Princeton current measures this number. I'll come back to this plot again later. 
So sigma a tension we call or SA tension we call is uh, uh, all most of you know low you know red time universe uh, data set imply lower number of a set compared to what CMB predicts for lambda shield model. This is a SA tension, okay? So uh, I personally I, I'm really really you know uh, taking this tension seriously. So uh, I really want to. I'd like to know if or not this tension is true. So if tension is true, either unknown schematic error in uh, uh, all data set, this data set from different telescope, okay? We are all made a similar mistake in some way, same way, the same direction. Or new physics beyond random series model, beyond five numbers, okay? So if this data case is true, that would be another step forward for understanding our universe. So this, that's why this SA tension would be, would be quite exciting kind of ta task to, to tackle with current data set. So uh, here, uh, by using uh, such a uh, uh, high precision smaller data set, we wanna use weak virtual lensing, again, Nick Kaiser's predictions, and, uh, and uh, this is a really, really unique and powerful way to measure dark matter distributions. So again, this is uh, kind of uh, you know simple illustration. If you observe distant galaxies, uh, uh, light emitted by uh, by distant galaxy bent by intervening matter distributions, then you end up finding a distorted image on the sky. This observed galaxy image, this uh, intervening galaxy image, and observed galaxy image is distorted by weak gravitational lensing called by gravitational lensing. So what we can measure is a uh, LPTCT in the galaxy image on the sky, such a Mauna Kea sky. Then, then this is a A and B, uh, LPTCT. We quantify our uh, galaxy LPTCT by, you know, kind of LPTCT because uh, everything galaxy gravitation tight. And uh, a two spin two field can describe everything basically. And uh, this LPTCT is a really, really good quantity, leading quantity to press uh, uh, this distortion effect. A minus B over A plus B are proportional to amount of dark matter because dark matter clumping, dark energy no, no, not homogeneous, homogeneous more or less, only dark matter clump, no, clump, clumping or clustering. And also like uh, uh, how this galaxy is distant from us. So it uh, depends on distance combination to the uh, ranging object and, and source galaxy. And how much, uh, how, how Dark matter distribution is an inhomogeneous, inhomogeneous, uh, uh, inhomogeneous uh, kind of density fluctuation, delta M. <laughs> if density fluctuation smooth, and then uh, this, you know, sigma is higher, this clumpiness is higher. So then in that way, uh, it depends on omega matter and the clumpiness of dark matter distributions. So uh, in gen, this number combination proportion to sigma H times omega matter up to 0.5 power, that's S8. I defined, okay? So this way, we could lensing really, really sensitive to this number, S8. Also, uh, this, uh, you know, if you consider a distant galaxy, lensing effect is larger, this alpha would be positive. The however, this lensing effect, distortion effect, is tiny, really tiny, only in terms of elliptici, only a few percent, one, one percent at most. So you, you really need to use many, many galaxies in, in order to subsequently measure this effect. But there is a way uh, developed in the community, and uh, this is a way to measure it. I describe. So HACS3, uh, we are using about 416 square degree data set. Sounds like a small area on the sky, but we are much deeper. So in terms of constant power, uh, 416 square degrees plus depth has a comparable, comparable uh, constant power as DES, dark energy survey. Oh, we have a six disjoint survey region like this. Uh, this color code is showing like a sheen, like a sharpness image on sky. And the blue or green correspond like a 0.6 last second on sky. Point source look like a 0.6 uh, 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 FHW, uh, the sheen size kind of disk. So really, really sharp image compared to, let's say, a uh, dark energy survey data set that's a 0.9 arc second. So uh, in order to do weak range cosmology, uh, uh, in order to avoid uh, any confidence bias, because uh, once again, we wanna address if or not SA tension is true. 
uh, we are making blind analysis. These days, uh, all cosmology analysis are uh, experiment using this blind technique, blind analysis technique. So this, uh, this slide is showing uh, what we did. So we use like two blinding strategy, uh, two uh, blinding analysis layers, and the one is catalog level blinding, is that we prepare three catalogs. Well, only one is true, the other is fake. We multiply some unknown multiple factor of every galaxy ellipticities in order to make a final plot that look like this, a three catalog and the three different catalogs. And uh, I say difference will be largest difference between a uh, uh, largest difference or the value from three catalog would be uh, uh, you know, point 0.1 by design. That's greater than current sigma and SA tension, CMB and large structure uh, data set. And analysis level blinding is that uh, every time we are making this posterior distribution plot like this, every time you know we, we cannot we are not allowed to see the true value number. We always we shifted counter around zero, and we are not allowed to compare with any experimental uh, external data set like a Planck CMB or a DS data set. Always we have to compare only with like a HAC data or posterior. So in this way, we believe we, we, can, we can avoid any confidence bias. And we made lots of tests, test, neural tests and small tests. And then after we, 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 we are convinced, we did all tests on one day at telecom. <laughs> you know, we just said, I'm blind. Also, with promise, we don't change at all any result after I'm blind. That day was quite frustrating day. <laughs> And Luffy and my home students now Sugiyama uh, kind of has to write a PhD thesis. <laughs> and even now, our academic is different. Uh, he has to submit his PhD thesis, dissertation, dissertation uh, uh, kind of mid-December last year. But I'm blinding, we did in uh, December 2nd, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so it's now my home student, he's now working at UPenn, you should invite him. So he's really uh, very good. He was really nervous in the morning. And uh, if I say the body is negative after I'm blinding, so <laughs> still he has to publish everything. So I say the body, you know, it's, uh, that, that day was really, really frustrating day. But after I'm blinding, everything we are happy and so exciting. So we are, we, that's why we are here. <laughs> I'm here. So, um, and the user step, maybe this is too much detail. So, uh, but one thing I, I'd like to really, really uh, hear uh, your input and feedback. So here, the really unique thing for HH analysis, I'd like, I, I'd like to really stress. So one biggest uncertainty for weak range cosmology is the Hodoji uncertainty. And because we only have a five broadband filter color, GRIZY, and only five filter wouldn't be, you know, kind of enough to, you know, estimate galaxy redshift because weak range Depends on source redshift. You have to know the redshift. You have to only use like automatic redshift estimate of each, each galaxy. But five color wouldn't be enough. Okay, so uh, uh, Marcus Rau is an expert for this automatic redshift and, uh, and also estimation intrinsic uh, redshift distribution of the galaxy. And this plot showing that we are dividing 25 million galaxy into four being first being G1, G2, G3, G4. And the gray shade region, I'm not sure you, you see it, the gray shade region from photometric redshift estimate for each galaxy. And by using photometric redshift, we are, you will decide to divide our galaxy into four bins, G1, G2, G3, G4. G4 is highest, G1 is lowest. And with data points ERABA from classing redshift, because some galaxy, like a red sequence galaxy, each, each redshift, because the red, 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 red sequence galaxy is the latest galaxy in the universe, and the red galaxy has a really good photosy. We call Camilla luminous red galaxies, each red shift. So and that, you know, particular galaxy has a good photosy. Then, then by using cross correlation between good photosy galaxy and the HAC source galaxy, you can infer a source red galaxy distribution. Because source, if source galaxy distributions in the same red shift to, to luminous red galaxies, there is a correlation, clustering correlations. So this is we call clustering redshift. But however, this luminous red galaxy available up to only G equal one-ish. After that, for the Ongstrom, go beyond optical wave band, then, then no, the, you know, no uh, luminous red galaxy is available for us. So red is joint kind of estimation. Uh, joint analysis of estimating intrinsic DNGZ of source galaxies. That's uh, a red one, shade region. 
So uh, a unique kind of thing for our analysis is uh, uh, G1, G2, we believe we did a good job. We have a good policy, good ratio estimations. But third, G3 and G4, uh, tail, we don't have any way to calibrate. G4, basically no, no way to calibrate because no luminous rate galaxy LRG. So uh, we accept that uncertainty. That's a, a unique thing. So we introduce new, some parameter to, to model, unknown regime of super error in the mean source threshold G3 and G4. Please remember it. That's a really unique thing for us. So uh, at the moment, please ignore this line. And uh, indeed, we cleansing great. And that's why I'm so excited. I have been working on cleansing for many years. And by using shape shape on the sky, making cross correlation. Indeed, we create, as we create the predicts, there is a correlation between different galaxies on the sky. And very busy plot, and uh, this is a triangle showing the, uh, showing C plus, like a tangential tangential on the sky, electricity component. And uh, this is a C minus, like a 45 rotated one, not tangential, connect, uh, with respect to connecting line. But anyway, four times four mean like a, a source galaxy sitting G4, G4. So the galaxy sitting G3, uh, G3. So then this, this signal is there. And uh, this wide range difference, sorry about it. But we have really, really good measurement as we can predict, OK? So then, then only in order to make a cosmology inference, you need a theory. Uh, but that theory is rather simple if we know source distribution. So uh, this, uh, you know, uh, this cosmic shear correlation function given by uh, matter clustering, matter power spectrum, dark matter power spectrum, and, uh, and uh, you know, kind of uh, 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 distance combination. This is a basically background cosmology. Again, if you know the source electricity distribution, this number you can compute if you assume like a, a lambda shield model. And dark matter power spectrum also, uh, we have a good understanding of uh, non linear dark matter power spectrum based on simulation and, uh, and, and so on. And I, I'll touch on, and I'll come back to the baryonic effect on data, but I, it, this one we know. So then uh, cosmology comes in, this distance combination and this dark matter power spectrum. Okay, then try to find the best model which can reproduce that measurement as a function source H. And then we do based on inf parameter inference as usual. And uh, if I can spend more time, describe covariance, blah, blah, blah. But uh, we did as usual. So this is too technical, so I skip it. <laughs> so, uh, however, you, you, you know, this is uh, our parameters, OK? Uh, as I told you, five parameter, cosmic parameter, this is uh, what we are most interested in because you, 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 you want to kind of address SA tensions. And SA tension, SA come, coming from these numbers. However, in addition to that, we have to introduce other nuisance parameter to model uh, other systemic error, physical systemic error and the physical uh, systematic measurement errors. Uh, Balinic effect and the galaxy shape might have intrinsic correlation that we call intrinsic alignment, IA, five parameters, and the source galaxy distributions. Again, I'll uh, 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 come back to this one. And uh, share error, multiple error, because our, we are using image simulation, detailed image simulation, but our calibration might be not perfect. And the PFS error, PSF measurement, again, Robert is super expert, but uh, PSF is not, a measurement is not perfect. We also in, introduced some parameters to, to model digital uncertainty in PSF. So in total, we have 25 parameters for parameter inference. So uh, one here, I really want to kind of stress that G3, G4, I, as I told you, some tail G3 not, not, is not calibrated. G4 is not calibrated. So we introduce a flat prior rather than narrow prior. <laughs> okay. So flat prior means uh, uh, this one. Okay, This is the same plot I showed. Flat prior from minus one to one, meaning that uh, we assume shape. But the mean source redshift G3 and G4, we allow to be long by one <laughs> from zero to like this. If G3 around G equal one, we allow this, this mean redshift can be zero 
it is stupid, really stupid, <laughs> or two, flat flyer. Usual kind of analysis by, by you know, kind of dark energy survey or kilo square degree survey in Europe, uh, usually we assume like a few percent kind of prior in the mean source redshift. This is totally different. We, we decided to take this conservative approach. That's more or less my job, actually. <laughs> I try to convince, let's, let's try to do very conservative analysis. So then we allow to this huge prior, uh, kind of a flat prior to make a, a cosmology influence. So I'll just tell you how we can make a cell calibration with data set. But this is, this is, this is new, okay? <laughs> so, so we employ an E multiplier on a mean source redshift, G3, G4. Uh, then, uh, what's, what I, which plot I showed, okay? So again, we, we make a parameter influence, the best fit model you can go through the data, and then, then before going to, uh, unknown error and photos uh, source redshift. Uh, this is a parameter uh, inference result is a uh, state look like this. We made, I, I skipped it, but we made several kind of method analysis like uh, a cosmic share two-point correlation function analysis, free space, real space, and also three uh, cross two-point correlation function by combining HSC and special uh, SSS galaxies. But here, uh, this uh, posterior corner plot just showing that a uh, uh, parameter inference posterior from cosmic shear uh, in the Fourier space and the real space. And this number we got, and we have a whole percent fraction accuracy. And the uh, uh, other thing is that we found, again, after unblinding, okay, during blinding analysis, we, you know, you don't know. We know that this kind of error, non-zero, small effect, you know, mean source redshift, G3 and G4, uh, minus 0.1 for G3, minus 0.4, uh, minus about, 0.2 for G4. My parameter, our parameter is not that intuitive. Minus means that true redshift is higher than what photo Z predicts. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So minus might be confusing. Okay, once again, <laughs> minus means that true source redshift would be higher than the kind of clustering and the photo Z estimation predicts. So, but we found non-zero uh, mean source redshift error. And by it's quite significant at two sigma, and this one also 2.5 sigma. So, how you can calibrate mean source redshift? Okay, so this plot showing that uh, uh, again, best fit model, red and the data point. Now I'm just plotting the same wide range, wide range, the same, all panels again, C plus, C minus, four times four, three by three. Two by two, again, two mean that's two Z2, G1, and the cross power spectrum. Again, because a uh, uh, source galaxy in a different reshit share the same, same foreground structures. So if you assume like a DG3, DG4, again, kind of regular in a mean source reshit to be zero as photo predicts, then green curve look like this. Maybe this is busy plot. Let's focus on only G4 bin. <laughs> G4 bin, okay? Once again, four plus four means like two galaxies sitting G4. Three plus four means that one galaxy is sitting G4, other galaxy G3. So even if I, I, as I told you, I assume flat prior G4, this means social can be long by my, minus one to one, okay? Like this. <laughs> but however, actually data set is just showing that if I use, we use, one galaxy sitting one, and one galaxy is a G4, ranging signal because shared structure like this here, smaller, larger, getting larger, getting larger. So indeed, of course, Hodoji is not that super low, okay? Indeed, G4 uh, has a highest ratio because that's why ranging signal is getting higher and higher. So, and also this peak, also, you can see because, uh, you know, due to 3D length scale versus the angular scale, the kind of projection from 3D to angular scale, this peak location would be slightly different as predicted, you know, assuming G3 and G4 equal zero as the photo predicts. So this way, <laughs> I hope this plot is convincing enough. This way, we can self-calibrate residual error in the mean source redshift simultaneously with cosmic parameters. <laughs>
okay? We are playing both daily cosmic parameters and also this mean source redshift error to try to find the best fit model to explain all data sets. Then we found non-zero mean source redshift errors. Okay, okay, <laughs> so please. Z3, which was mostly calibrated with the clustering redshifts, does this mean that the tail is much longer for that sample or that there's something wrong with the clustering redshift calibration itself? Again, you know, uh, thank you, that's a really great question. So we allow, you know, G3 mostly calibrated, you may, may think so, but the higher there's the tail. Tail might be long, you know, this is high risk, more stuff in galaxies, and the color might be different from Cosmos, what Cosmos, play, Cosmos data set predicts, and so on. So really, really, this is an open question. So this, you know, again, we, we try to be conservative. Again, these, all these things are just outcome after unblinding. I mean, I said value. So then, then we found this kind of, kind, of, kind of calibration, you know. So that this is just we accepted. We decided this strategy. It's worth emphasizing that the model is pretty simplistic. It's just a shift, yeah. and perhaps probably the truth is a little bit more complicated than that. If we had a, if we knew the true redshift distribution, calibrate this sort of quantifies or parameterizes our ignorance uh, about yeah, that. Yeah, we, we assume like shape is the same, but only means shift. Yeah, so maybe shape might be different actually. Like um, they're assuming a low S eight cost. No, no, same S eight. Same as a problem, they all same. Only changing DG3, DG4 to be zero rather than non zero. In principle, a higher, slightly higher SA might compensate. Right. 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 But the fee, kind of case is slightly wrong, worse than this one. Yeah, Peter, please. Follow up on the, on the same line. Um, have you tried doing the same thing with G2? G2 is we, otherwise, we lose counseling power actually. <laughs> <laughs> so here we assume this this guy too we know then we cross calibrate. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah that's really good. Yeah, we, we might. Right. Yeah, yeah, we might. So uh, again, all number after I'm blinding, again we promise we didn't, didn't change. You know, this is uh, what we decided to publish, and then indeed as as uh, she has asked, if we assume. Photosy prior as photosy predicts, then then photosy predicts narrow posterior distribution, narrow uh, mean source ratio errors, then error bar shrink by factor two. Uh, in principle, HSC data has a much more constant power, factor two, error bar. However, mean central value is shift, more than one sigma. If we, we decide to take standard approach, standard approach means if we take kind of for the prior on the mean source rest shift, our SA value would be consistent Planck value. Okay. <laughs> Again, this is outcome, okay? We didn't know that before I'm blinding. <laughs> so this is a summary plot. Again, I, I also discuss like a balloon effect. So I, I'd like to talk on it. So this is summary up to here. And we, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I, I don't have any time to talk about other analysis, but we have a uh, three different analysis on the three by two PT, including linear scale and the clutch nonlinear scale uh, by using HSC and the strong digital sky survey data set, uh, including GG lensing. That's also really, really interesting stuff. All constraint, and we are using all, all the different brand catalogs. And uh, one day we unbranded, in the in the finally we compared three different analysis. Again, that's consistent with each other. And uh, this is, blue is a three by two PT, uh, two point correlation function. And red and, uh, and green in the cosmic shear. And uh, of course, you know, this is con we, after inconsistent test, I know consistent test, this is consistent with each other. And we, our result is uh, uh, showing a slightly lower value of S8 compared to Planck. Planck is this, this guy. So uh, I can tell from HSC, uh, uh, again, this is summary plot once again. Uh, SA value and the H, you know, CMB, and uh, we added new data set, new data points from HSCS3 data, data. And uh, this is cosmic shear, and this, this is a uh, uh, three by two point correlation function analysis, both showing smaller SA, 
about two uh, or two point five sigma ish, similar to like other weekly survey data set. And the galaxy clustering thing here, here and the Misha, I, me, I also work with Misha and Mattia Samson who has a theory paper, who called challenge paper. And uh, you know, I'd like to hear, uh, you know, I'm planning to talk to Matthias uh, after this talk. If uh, <laughs> also Princeton colleagues also finding lower sigma eight from for the different analysis, this, this clustering analysis of both data thrown, but different scale, you know, it's, you know, cosmic shear more sensitive to higher K, smaller scale. And uh, this, this clustering is more or less uh, I mean, sensitive to larger scale because due to uh, galaxy bias, cosmic shear free of galaxy bias uncertainty. And also, I, I'd like to stress that uh, uh, I, my former student, uh, Yosuke Kobayashi, currently working at Arizona, Tucson. He, we also did like a, another analysis by using emulator, uh, in-mode simulation calibrated emulator for the space clustering uh, theory. Uh, that's also indicating small, slightly smaller value, uh, sigma eight. So for me, I have a really good reason <laughs> to, to believe uh, all galaxy survey data sets to point Lower sigma eight, so I'd like to know, and uh, I, I, you know, I'm really trying to, you know, emphasize that we try to be our central value would be true, okay? We made our conservative analysis, then then this is outcome. So can be new physics. This can be opportunity for us to explore. So can be another new breakthrough. Can be neutron mass, dark energy, or dark matter two component anything i'm very happy about it you know if this is true. <laughs> of course here another uh, center of actor you know cmb lensing and uh, recent cmb lensing is also showing that now this cmb lensing showing like a, a consistent sa value with Planck. but here yesterday I, I was able to talk to Stefan. Stefan did analysis like by using both clustering bao and Planck lensing he also finding smaller sigma eight so again, I'm confused. I'm totally confused. Again, but however, or as a HAC collaboration, we really try to get one number from HAC data. This is a, this is a result. So, uh, you know, uh, we cleansing galaxy clustering and I'm, I'm trying to work on uh, kind of both different methods and, uh, and the HAC, you know, cosmic shared, this day getting kind of lo losing some credibility because uh, uh, people start to say that cosmic shear is more uh, affected by baryon. That's true, of course. And here I'd like to emphasize that our kind of robustness of HSC results. Again, this is really great effort from community and DES people and the kids people uh, work together to make a joint analysis. And uh, 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 maybe I should be quick. So uh, this is published value. This is a kit, Kiloscale Degree Survey from Europe, uh, European collaboration. And they, this is a published result for, for SA value. And this is DES. Uh, Cosmic Shea, uh, Alex Amon, and uh, Luca, uh, Lucas Seco's uh, result in here. This published one. But these people meet together because uh, a different team using different kind of model, a different parameter, parameter choice, different priors. And they meet together to, to, to decide which parameter, which prior choice we have to use, we should use for cosmology inference. So uh, this in maybe I shouldn't so much emphasize, okay? If kids people using DS like pipeline, okay, <laughs> their center value is shifted like this, okay? If DS people use a kids like pipeline, again, different parameter choice. You know, DS people didn't include varying parameter, parameter to model parent effect. Their, their center value shifted like this, more than one sigma, Elaba, doesn't mean so much, okay? <laughs> Elaba is supposed to include all Simagera effect, okay? Theory effect and the Simagera, but however, unfortunately, their result, she's a lot. HAC result, no, don't change. <laughs> but uh, we pay for Elaba because we made a conservative analysis. So this pro, you know, this, this panel nicely showing that robust analysis is very important. So we have to have a larger data set to pin down error bars. And you know that to allow some room for smoke errors. So baryons, okay? Baryon is uh, baryon super important. We are made of baryon. <laughs> so, so baryon is super crucial and uh, there should be baryon effect. 
So, uh, you know, into some level, level variance should affect our cosmic inference. But however, we are using energy simulation kind of prediction for model. So you have to quantify. So I, I have a simple mind, uh, a mindset, actually, I'm a cosmologist. So it's, uh, <laughs> for me, baryon feedback on, uh, on the cosmic share data set is this is my picture. <laughs> Haro has to form, dagmada forms, and you know, baryon can form, and the baryon eventually can, should make a dissipation process, can make a galaxy in center. And we know like a supernova feedback is not important. Uh, these days are people really talking about the agent feedback. And the central galaxy should have a supermass black hole in center. Then, then supernova, uh, uh, supermass black hole has uh, agent activity, produce you know, uh, feedback in gas, and you know, galaxy, you know, gas blow up afterward. Up to here, everything galaxy clustering. So, you know, clustering is enhanced. But if agent feedback or blow up, baryon feed, uh, kind of blow up is important, then, then this is smelling out. And uh, for cosmic kind of relevant scale for cosmic scale cosmology is uh, these effect appear in the suppression. And even if agent feedback, like a shock, propagates a thousand kilometers per second, you multiply, let's say, cosmic age, like a year, you will get like a mega parsec. So you only push back, push baryon up to mega parsec from uh, kind of halo center. So uh, one point is that, uh, 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 you know, I would like to stress that, you know, baryon effect is local. You have to start from halo formation and galaxy center, the agent feedback, agent heat switch on feedback. So a baryon effect kind of scale, baryon effect should be smaller than nonlinear clustering effect. Nonlinear clustering effect should be, can be simulated by energy simulation. In, in terms of wave number, uh, K nonlinear, nonlinear clustering effect, energy simulation can predict precisely, uh, accurately, should be smaller than baryon effect. That's my picture, okay. <laughs> So different hydro simulation uh, make a prediction and indeed uh, around the cake of one inch in, uh, uh, in terms of uh, one by main parsec, H over main parsec, every all hydro simulation predicts uh, suppression. Afterward, you know, due to galaxy formation is an uh, enhancement. But around here is the most relevant in cosmic cosmology. So this is really, really important. How much suppression we have due to agent feedback that's the biggest question for the current cosmic share community. <laughs> so local, so I, I mean, here, uh, you know, maybe this is busy plot. I'm just showing that it's, uh, uh, once again, uh, baryon effect is local for me, okay? <laughs> once again, this equation. This plot showing that how much this change in a cosmic parameter, sigma eight, omega, omega mother, this is a, a determine SH compared to agent feedback. Agent feedback, again, if you uh, uh, plug in some he heating in the baryon, you can mimic that uh, baryon blow up around the halos. That's number uh, 10 to 8 Kelvin, thermal energy to inject to baryon from AGN. Then, then that, that's, that reproduce uh, a hydro simulation, some suppression, uh, this, uh, uh, this magenta like this, like a, a K equal to one is like a, about, let's say 10% suppression. Okay, this, this, this guy. So uh, indeed this, our scale, I didn't, sorry, I forgot to mention about this scale cut. So far, I, we are using only this unshaded region. We try to be conservative for scale cut because we, we know baryon effect can be important, very small scale. For all our physical analysis, we want to using this unshaded region to avoid this, this region. And this plot showing that uh, effect on the cosmic shear observable, this C plus, C minus, compared to error bar. And this AGN feedback effect appear indeed in smaller scale, slightly in a C minus uh, kind of uh, 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 propagate into this unshaded region, but it's still smaller scale. But however, if you change sigma eight, omega mother, causing global effect all scale basically. If everything in linear theory, a sigma eight change, only constant offset, but however sigma eight change causing like a scale dependent effect as well. 
Uh, but this one, sorry, this one is divided by sigma, so that didn't, doesn't mean anything. So, so sorry about this. It's also showing that uh, uh, different, showing that in a, a nonlinear effect or sensitive to all the sigma eight, then causing a scale, another scale dependence. So you can distinguish between this one and this one. So I, I and my, my current student, Leo Terasawa, decided to use even simpler question, okay? Because simulating modeling varying effects is so complicated. We step back, we made a more simple, simplest question. What's wrong by just using dark one only model? Okay. <laughs> if or not, uh, HSC dataset can show any signature of failure of dark one only model in, in a small scale. If varying effects are very big in the real universe, we should find a failure of dark one only model prediction to fit to data as a function of scale cut. Because our motivation is like this. We know uh, uh, linear theory is really, really accurate because uh, that's why HMV uh, cosmology is really so successful. But uh, in addition, so next leading like a theory for structural formation is in the simulations. Now people running lots of lots of simulations and the gravity only, and we really understand the nonlinear clustering from simulations. Equally, part of the theory. So I really believe that image simulation prediction and uh, part of the theory. So we decide to use uh, inverse simulation prediction as a model to fit the data. Then try to find if or not this uh, simplest model can fail to fit our data as a function of scale cut. Answer is no, so far. <laughs> our error was large, first of all. I know value is important. But however, even if we remove smaller scale cut, we use down to one alchemist in a C plus, all the way we can fit data with dark one only model. If a uh, baryonic effect, suppression effect, important than we naively expect from hydro simulation, I would expect this data point showing some suppression on a small scale, below like 10 arc minutes, you know. Uh, but our data just going through. So answer, uh, uh, my, our current answer, is, is a, a variant effect is not that, you know, super big compared to current, you know, expectation. Or, well, you know, hydro simulation, elasticity energy showing kind of place, really, really small suppression. Maybe that might be true, 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 close to the universe. But anyway, this, this number showing that if we use dark kind of the model to use smaller, smaller scale cost, smaller uh, L1, L2 means uh, uh, anyway, our physical cut is here, uh, additional one point data point, L1, L2, L3 is additional more data down to smaller scale. Then indeed our essay is slightly shifting towards a smaller kind of uh, essay <laughs> because suppression only one direction. But if you include baryon effect, baryon, uh, baryon effect should be there. If baryon suppression is there, always one direction that corresponds to smaller essay. Indeed might be is a, uh, so that is hint, but in effect, but in terms of high scale, I cannot tell if or not this is better <laughs> by having variant effect. <laughs> so uh, uh, this is ongoing project and Leo Terasawa uh, is working hard and we try to wrap up and, uh, and the variant effect very important, really, 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 really open question us, but our current data set, HAC cannot tell us uh, you know, if or not variant is, is there, variant effect is there to be measurable amount. And uh, I think we are also working PFS, but uh, I think I don't have enough time. So this, uh, but uh, I, I should stress that, uh, 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 no, no. Uh, PFS, we are using, we are now building new instrument. Now for this video view, we have 2,400 fibers, rather than imaging camera. We, we can have a simultaneous spectral observation of 2,400 objects on the sky. Selecting from HSC object. That's going to be going, it's really, really exciting. So we can do like a throne like survey on the same sky, same region, both a deep imaging data set and deep specific data set, data set at the universe, in the universe at uh, let's say greater than unity. And the Princeton, of course, is super important institute and, uh, and, uh, and we are working on it. And we, we now, we, we 
make our fiber uh, position of precision to be to, to the precision like a 10 micron on the sky. That's why they are uh, thanks to Robert's effort, we managed to achieve. So that's a little bit milestone for us, and this is working. So uh, this is summary. So I tried to, you know, swerve is great. Okay, fast ball. <laughs> and here I, I, I'd like to, I, I hope I can convince you, you know, uh, our cosmology results from HHER3 data set. And, uh, you know, essay tension for me is a really big deal. And I really would like to know if or not this essay tension true. And my current, current take is that uh, uh, our old data set points are like a lower sigma eight compared to CMB S8 or sigma eight. So I, I think at the moment, this is a really true different data set showing. So really we're gonna, we gonna know this at five sigma level. So that's why uh, we have to work more on this. And the HHPFS really, really great combination. And uh, uh, you know, uh, this imaging and the spectroscopic data set can be really, really powerful even in the LSST era. And uh, we hope we can do even more exciting science by using this data set. And the super PFS will start in 2025, uh, about one year from now. And we are currently working on commissioning. So please, please stay tuned. And the Princeton has been very, very important partner. And please ask Robert and Michael for PFS. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. Um, for this n body only analysis, um, how are you taking into account the uncertainties in the simulation at small scales? Because Euclid did a code comparison that at k of one, different n body codes with different time stepping schemes and things like that have about maybe a you know five ish percent uncertainty at k, you know past k of one, and it gets worse, which seems to be similar scales to k scales to what you're probing here in this analysis. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So I didn't mention it. So. I mentioned it. Uh, we are using another emulator. Takaru Nishimichi is running lots and lots of simulations, another simulation to build a new uh, emulator for dark matter only uh, model precision or power spectrum. And we made a lots of model comparison between Euclid emulator, HM code, and Hyrofit. And once again, originally we expected, uh, like this Fossilia Conta, uh, by using our, our believed most accurate dark matter emulator versus HM code, kind of standard, standard model, like a head of it people using. This posterior code are not that different, actually. And uh, this, like a, a different model, um, different simulation based uh, kind of prediction, like a level of a kind of difference, like a, a, up to 1% or a up to 1% ish, then that difference doesn't appear this, this year. So uh, that paper will come out also separately. But the whole, this, this particular project, we are using new emulator. And uh, one, one uh, upcoming uh, uh, the paper describing that new emulator is showing all model comparison, different kind of different model uh, comparison, uh, comparison different model or different emulator. So that's not, not important, unfortunately. If dark emulator is better, do better. <laughs> because we, are, we learn lots of simulation. So we are more happy, but uh, this, this, this posterior contact is not that different, unfortunately. <laughs> compared to our efforts. <laughs> yeah, that is. How much better will Euclid, Ruben, Roman be? Will this problem be solved on a five or 10 year time scale with that? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, another question. So is uh, even, we need not to wait for like a Roman or Ruben, so. Biggest uncertainty is that uh, uh, I, I really stress like a photomic residue for weak lensing because photosy is limitations. And uh, our analysis, we allow like a mean source to error. But the PFS is gonna be really, really great data set. Same sky, same region, and all area overlap. And the PFS has near infrared capability. We have a, a spectral observation of emission in galaxy from G equal 0.6 up to 2.4. Same logic structures. If PFS data is calm, in addition to BA analysis, we can make another cross question between PFS galaxies with the spectroscopy redshift with HH source galaxies. That's really faint. But we can use clustering redshift 
then we can remove all uncertainty mean source ratio. Then error bar would be shrink like this. <laughs> so there is a guarantee. If we can remove source ratio uncertainty, HAC has a this power. So we need not wait for Rubin. That's, I should say, from Subaru. <laughs> but for you, Ruby is super exciting. <laughs> so, so PF is going to be super, really nice data to calibrate Ruby's photometric ratio. But at least this is a small area. And all area is still large, such area is large, but this is guaranteed science. So we, we, can, we can tell, like five sigma. So this is guaranteed science. So let's see somehow no physical uncertainty. So let's see, uh, uh, unless, uh, uh, if you pay, you can resolve it. <laughs> you know, that's an e easy job. But that's expensive, however. Are you saying that the, uh, the if you can improve the yeah. automatic yeah. ratio, mm -hmm. and then both S8 and Omega Matter will, the error will shrink significantly. Yeah. Yeah. And also, Omega Matter, like, by measurement. But I, I will center value, I randomly picked it up. This is the whole chest. Yeah. Can this 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 center value can be here, can be here, can be anywhere. <laughs> but the uh, size of error for Syria region would be true. The uh, marginalized over <laughs> other yeah. parameters. Mm -hmm. If um I'm not sure you've look, looked at this, but one of the striking things about the ACT uh, CMB lensing data is that the 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 peak of the of the curve um, occurs at redshift about one, maybe a little more. Um, where does it's a sort of woofly question, but at what redshift is does your data peak? What is the most important redshift? Well, us is up 0.5, and the CMB ranging kernel peak around G equals three, but the most recent CMB you know, uh, uh, lensing is uh, like according to MAP, they are more or less sensitive to G equals 1.5 ish. And uh, indeed, as thank you, Jim, asking about this, CMB lensing finding a higher sigma eight, well, consistent sigma eight is blank. The however, they are looking at the more linear scale, small k, and they are probing matter radiation equality k. So CMB lensing, most recent ArcGL6 CMB lensing result is smaller k compared to even like a galaxy clustering and the kind of galaxy lensing and at the higher redshift. And HSC is sensed to higher k, smaller scales and the lower redshift. So now puzzles, all, all puzzling, okay? <laughs> different, different expense showing different results. And if, if there is no act lensing, we are so excited. But uh, in April, same week, we had a press release from HSCS3 and the act people also made another press release from, from Kyoto in the same week. And then we are so confused, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> This this is opportunity for us, you know. You, we have to resolve. This is a. I should probably know the answer to this question, but I don't. Is the if the baryon effects are diluting your shear measurements, will they also? Won't they also dilute the CMB? No. Are they impossible? Yes, correct. So is a more, more or less linear theory. You can use it, and. Uh, I'm, I'm really confused, and uh, I, I'd like to talk also uh, some expert in, uh, in here later, so, but maybe too much in here, but uh, really key quant this is really most really good paper by recently from from the team and the ESP energy and uh, cosmic shear, <laughs> like amount of suppression comparing dark matter and hydro simulation power spectrum versus like dark matter only simulation at K equal one. Again, K equal one is a small scale scale cosmic shear cosmology is using. Really sensitive to barium fraction cluster scales. 
This is a 10 to 14 solar halo and the value of fraction x axis. And this is the amount of suppressions. <laughs> and this different data points is a all hydro simulation result. So only sitting on one curve. If you do simulation, hydro simulation, if you baryon grow up in a class scale scale, baryon fraction going to down, suppression in larger. That's it. <laughs> okay. So Flamingo team assuming rather larger feedback to agent. So they're assuming similar baryon fraction cluster scale. Elasticity energy people assuming a larger baryon fraction. And this is data point from X ray. So really, really, you know, kind of baryon fraction in a cluster scale from data, X-ray or SC, anything, <laughs> can go, gonna be really, really important to know observationally how much suppression you could have. But this is important for Smithia, not for CMB engine. So uh, here I'd like to tell you like a baryon fraction class scale would be key. So please tell me. <laughs> I'm not working on X-ray, so that's that's not my job. Well, that's uh, fantastic. Okay.